Hi guys, this is Dustin, and today I'm going to be talking about how to do object-oriented programming in Lua. Now, object-oriented programming is, uh, well, first off, let me give a little presentation on what object-oriented programming is for those that don't exactly know. I'm guessing you do if you are if you come to this video, but if you don't, um, yeah, let me just describe the basics to what, of what object-oriented programming is. So, OOP, as it's often referred to, is uh, basically comprised of these three things. Um, inheritance and composition, which um, inheritance is where you take a base object, right? And you derive all the features, all the variables from that base object into your derived object. Um, and I'll talk a little bit more about what that means later on. Um, and then there's also composition. Now, composition is the preferred way to do uh, to do this because, um, th well, there's a lot of reasons that I'm not going to go into, but you can think of composition as kind of like an, um, you know, like an entity component system where you kind of combine a bunch of objects together. Um, encapsulation basically means that for every single object that you have in your project, they all manage their own state. All right. So state being, you know, private variables, maybe memory and stuff like that. Basically, every single class manages its own state and manipulates its own state, and no other object should have access to that. Um, now, if another object wants to, let's say, view the state of an object, or even, you know, change the state, because this happens all the time, right? We have to change the state of something else. Um, it has to do it through something called messages. Now, a message, you can think of it as just basically invoking a method. A, uh, a function that is attached to a, a uh, to a class to an object all right so you basically view um, the state of an object through a method and you can change the state of an object through a method polymorphism is the ability to basically overwrite uh, methods to put it very simply or even you know it, it, it doesn't have to specifically be object oriented programming you can uh, think of um, function overriding in C++ as polymorphism but it, um, typically in object oriented programming it means to take a method or a function that is attached to an object and when you derive from it via inheritance you can change that method to be um, to, to be what you need and I'll explain more later on so here's a little diagram of what inheritance is we have a, uh, a base class a person right and it has two members uh, called name and email now a teacher derives some person and uh, uh, takes everything that all the variables that the person has, right? The name and email, and then also has another variable subject, right? And then in turn, a uh, you know private school teacher will derive from teacher, and will take everything from the teacher and the person, and along with adding its own member uh, students. And you can see that a student derives from person, takes a name and email, but also has classes and grades. Um, this is useful for uh, you know for um, for uh, not having to rewrite a lot of your code, but there's a there, there is quite a few problems to inheritance. So it's not a it's not your one it's not a silver bullet, right? I would look into that yourself. Um, I'm I'm just here showing you how to actually do object oriented programming in Lua. I don't necessarily th agree with everything about it. Um, Lua is it, Lua is such a flexible programming language that you can do object oriented programming in. You can do functional programming, or you can do very C like um, procedural programming in it. And it's really your choice, depending on your uh, your problem that you're trying to solve in the language, um, to what kind of paradigm you want to to, to use. Anyway, um, here's an example of polymorphism. So we see we have a base class, a shape and it has a method or a function that's attached to that shape and that just says get area now a rectangle will derive from shape it will t and it will um, have its own like length and width variables and it has to sense you know a rectangles area is width times height it will basically override the get area function and make it you know return width times height whereas a circle is different from a rectangle to get the area it's just pi r squared right so it's pi times the radius uh, times the radius so, you know, it has to override that and uh, change it for itself. But anyway, that was my very quick, brief introduction to what object-oriented programming is. Um, there's tons in university, if you're going, you'll, you'll find that there's classes on uh, object-oriented programming. You can do your own research on that. But how do we actually do that in Lua? Well, like I said, Lua is a very, um, a very malleable programming language, right? You can do a lot of things in it. And uh, here is some libraries that I recommend if you want to get into, well, okay, I don't necessarily recommend, and I'll talk about that later, but here's a few really good libraries that you can use if you choose. So one of my favorites, and the one that I would choose out of the three, is middle class. 
middle class is pretty, um, pretty, uh, you know, it's, it's a big, I mean, it's not a big library, but it does a lot for you, and it's very much like the object-oriented programming you're used to if you program in Java. So we can say we create a new class, right, you know, named fruit, and then we give it a constructor. Um, a constructor is a function that basically gets called when you make a new instance of fruit, right? Uh, and then, you know, you can do static variables, you can do um, methods, and then you can derive from it, so you can subclass or inheritance, and then override the base, the constructor and call the base constructor, and, you know, everything you would expect in a, um, in an object-oriented, you know, environment, and this is called middle class. Another one that I found that I thought was pretty interesting is called Lua OOP, um, OOP, and uh, this, I like this one quite a lot because it still maintains a, um, you know, the Zen of Lua. If you're familiar with the Zen of Python, there's a certain way to write Lua, and uh, this kind of maintains that way. It's very function-based. It doesn't change the syntax of Lua, you know. Um, so I, I kind of like this one. If you want to use that, you know, I recommend it. Um, and then there's also 30log, and I like 30log too because it's a very small library. Uh, there's not a lot of code there. I think 30log stands for 30 lines of code, like code or whatever, you know. So, you know, you have the exact same thing, and um, yeah, you can, all, all, the, all three of these are hosted on GitHub, and you can use them for your own projects. Um, but, um, like I alluded to earlier, I don't necessarily recommend using a library, because like I said, I mean, object-oriented code you can actually do in plain Lua without any library, while maintaining a very Lua-esque, you know, like, uh, coding style. And let me just demonstrate how to do that real quick, and it's actually a lot simpler than you would think. So, um, with my last slides, uh, last slide, um, I showed an example of a shape, right? So let's actually implement that in Lua. So to actually create a, you know, a class, right, of sorts in Lua, let's just create a function that returns us a shape. So we'll say we have a function that returns us a shape, and uh, let's just return a table. And I'm actually going to make this uh, function take in. You can think of this function as a constructor, by the way. Um, let's make this function take in a width and height variable. And let's just add some properties to this uh, table. So we're going to say width is equal to width, or if there's no value passed in, then it's just going to be set to zero. We're going to do the same thing for height. Um, and then we're going to give this a method. So we're going to use the get area example. Since it's a method, this function needs to take in itself. And we can say we're just going to return width times height. So the base shape is essentially a rectangle. Um, so now we have a class that basically, you know, you can say, if you want to, you know, get a new instance of a class, we can say local my shape is equal to new shape, and we can make it 10 by 10, right? And uh, we basically just, you know, constructed an instance of this object. Now let's say we want to over, we want to derive from it. We want to create, we want to inherit from um, new shape. Let's create a, uh, a a new function called new rectangle. Um, now rectangle is going to take an x and a y in the constructor, and then a width and a height. And essentially, how we're going to do this is we're going to create a uh, a local variable that's just a new shape, right? And we're going to pass in width and height. And now we can attach our own properties to rectangle. We can say x is equal to x or zero y is equal to y or 0. And um, let's say we want to uh, attach a new method to it that checks if the rectangle is a square or not. So we can say is square, make it a method so it needs to take in itself. And we can just return that its width is equal to its height. Because a square is a, is, a, is a rectangle, or a rectangle is a square only if its width is equal to its height, right? All right, so we have a rectangle. Now let's create another subclass, and let's name this circle. Now this is going to take an x and y like a rectangle, but it's going to take in a radius. And we're going to say, we're going to do the exact same thing we did before, uh, but we're going to call it a circle. We're going to create a new shape, and we're not going to pass in a width or a height. Now re remember to return the shape right here when you're uh, done you know, attaching properties and stuff like that. So a circle has a radius, right? So let's give it that radius. And let's set its default value to zero. Uh, now, because a circle is different from a rectangle when it comes to getting its area, we have to override the get area method. So to do that, it's as simple as uh, just writing, the, uh, writing a new function for it, right? 
and the radius of a circle is um, is uh, pi times the radius squared. So math dot pow radius two. All right, and we have a uh, a circle. So as you can see, you know, with very little effort, we can kind of have everything that we need for object-oriented code, right? You can think of this function as a constructor, right? Now, this uh, const this constructor calls the base constructor, right? The new shape. And this is the constructor for the base class. Um, so you, you really do have everything that you need for an object-oriented system. Now, you, you might be asking yourself, what about, like, private variables? Well, I mean, my simple solution, and it may not, you know, suffice for a lot of you, but just uh, prefix your private variables with an underscore, or uh, prefix it or postfix it with an underscore, right? And then you know that if it has a prefix, just don't access that variable, just don't touch it. Um, and of course, you can break out the meta um, meta class or meta tables and stuff to actually make this more concrete. But honestly, that's not a whole lot more code that you would have to write yourself. And this way of doing things scales with your project. So a lot of times you don't really need a a library, a big old library to, to do all of this, you know? Um, you might want to use it just to make it more structured and all that, but honestly, I, uh, I think that, you know, this is, this is all you need. But, um, but yeah, anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed this, uh, this video. I hope you found it a little bit informational. Um, and yeah, I'll see you guys in the next episode. Bye.